The time is 4.30 on WKYT this morning. It was a long day for deputies in Madison County after one of their own was shot and a suspect was killed. What we now know about that story just ahead this morning. An investigation is underway after some people found a dead body in a Lexington park. We'll have more on that investigation coming up. And a man accused of shooting two women in Knox County will appear before a judge today. More on that case just ahead on WKYT. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning, and it's so good to have you with us on WKYT Thursday, June 2nd. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain, just one day away from Friday. Yeah, right, rolling along this week, and uh, changes are coming. Had a storm or two kind of roll through some of the region last night. So let's I check I didn't hear in. any of that. You didn't? No, I was tired. <laughs> Micah said he had already gone to sleep, and then was awakened by it. I have to confess I wasn't asleep yet. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was about 9.30 when uh -huh. it rolled through Lexington and the central zones, and, and, and it was pretty loud. And not only that, very heavy. Heavy rainfall out of those, and that's exactly what we've been talking about the past couple of days. Is you have so much moisture out there that any storms that roll through, will drop down tremendous amounts of rain. We're sitting there at 68 degrees there in Lexington. It's a nice feel this morning. Couple spotty showers here and there, but as we hit the afternoon, more spotty storms in the forecast. Now this is going to be more during the day instead of the night, like last night. And then we'll get off through the next few days. We still have more storms, rounds of those to go, and I'll show you that in just a few minutes. We'll see you then. Thank. Thank you, Micah. Investigators have released some new details this morning about a shooting that left a Madison County Sheriff's deputy injured and a suspect dead. Police say the suspect shot the deputy, who then returned fire. It happened yesterday afternoon outside a home on Arthur Jackson Road near Berea. Officer Don shot this video of the scene from Sky First. The deputy had non life threatening injuries. Our own Garrett Weimer talked to the suspect's brother in law. The response alone got neighbors' attention. I'm down here every week. I never see this before. Police say Deputy Kevin Crutcher stopped Daniel Pig in his truck outside Pig's home on Arthur Jackson Road when Pig got out, pulled a gun, and shot Crutcher. Investigators say Crutcher fired back, hitting and killing Pig. I walked around the edge of the porch just to see, you know, if he was alive, and which I didn't. I, but I could see the blood all over his shirt, and I just turned and went back but around towards the house. Ricky Gaines was feeding his animals nearby when it all happened. He's also Daniel Pig's brother in law. He says he knew Pig had been in some trouble, but didn't think he'd shoot anybody, let alone a deputy. He never was afraid of man in his life, but I didn't think he'd ever shoot at somebody. He just, you know, he, I've seen him uh, get in arguments with people, but I never knowed him, you know, you know, drawing a gun on nobody or nothing or to, or since I've known him. Randy Lewis lives nearby. He waited for hours to get home while police investigated the shooting. He says he knew Pig, but stayed away from him. Yeah, I know he's had a pretty rough past. Yeah, it was no surprise to me. Now, police also arrested Joseph Curtis. An arrest citation says Curtis was in the truck with Pig, but got out and ran away when he heard gunshots. That citation says he left, changed clothes, and later denied he was there. Deputy Crutcher was rushed to UK Hospital in Lexington with a police escort. We saw many police cruisers from Madison County and around Central Kentucky pulling into the hospital's parking lot yesterday. Many officers say they wanted to stop by to make sure the injured deputy was okay. News of the shooting left people around Madison County concerned. It comes just seven months after Richmond police officer Daniel Ellis was killed in the line of duty. But as our Monique Blair tells us, people in Madison County are relieved that Deputy Crutcher did not suffer life threatening injuries. She continues our team coverage this morning. That's probably the worst thing anybody could do, shooting officer. More heartache for this town. It was an all too familiar feeling for many people who live in Madison County Wednesday afternoon after they heard that Sheriff's Deputy Kevin Crutcher was shot after he initiated a traffic stop. Frankie Thomas has lived here for 28 years. Many of his friends and family members work in law enforcement in the county. You get a phone call, officer down, first thing you start freaking out. Who is it? Who is it? Less than seven months ago, Richmond police officer Daniel Ellis was shot while he was investigating a robbery. He later died at UK Hospital. Now the people who live here in Madison County say they want all this violence to stop. It really mauls you. It's at home. And uh, it's kind of rough knowing your kids are growing up and don't know what to expect. You know, when people shoot officers, they'll shoot anyone. 
Although the people I talked to told me they were relieved Deputy Crutcher is now home with his family and recovering from his gunshot wound, they say the close call brought up the painful memories of Officer Ellis and reopened the wounds that have not yet had time to heal. I still haven't got over it. You know, we still have, have things for, the, for Officer Ellis. Tore us all up. Yeah. Still does. We still see it when we see signs or, you know, different decorations up that are still up for him. It's just heartbreaking. In Madison County, Monique Blair, WKYT. When it comes to breaking news, always stay with WKYT for the latest. You'll find updates on our website, WKYT.com, as well as the WKYT News app. Other news this morning, an investigation is underway after a body was found in a Lexington Park. Lexington police say some people at River Hill Park off Cosby Drive found a man's body in a wooded area about 4.30 yesterday afternoon. Police say it appears to be that of a man who had been dead for a long period of time. At this point, police say it does not appear that his death was caused by anything suspicious. He has not been identified yet, but police think he was around 70 years old. Investigators are looking into what caused an overnight fire that has damaged a house in Jessamine County. It happened late Wednesday on Collins Drive, just outside of Nicholasville. Firefighters say no one was hurt. The cause of the fire is still unknown this morning. Lightning is a possibility, we're being told. A storm was moving through the area at the time. A former Kentucky high school teacher has been accused of raping two students. The Boyd County Sheriff's Office arrested 45-year-old Howard Faber. Investigators say he used to be a JROTC teacher and a training instructor at Boyd County High School. Police say he raped two 16-year-old girls that he met through his teaching job. They say both girls were students at the high school, and school leaders say Faber planned to resign this summer but made it immediate in April when the investigation began. WKYT this morning is just getting started. When we come back, we'll have more news for you, plus some weather. Stay with us. And we'll be right back, 437 right now. Now, your hour-by-hour hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Now we're seeing some showers out and about, and, and look, it's not a lot of rain with this, so you're going to get a couple of sprinkles, a couple of light showers as they pass on through. Let's start with the northern zones, and then we'll kick back down south. As you're heading right across, right along that 127 corridor, peaks mill up toward Owenton, now getting in on the mix. Harmony, uh, if you're not seeing it already, you will be seeing it very shortly, and then work your way back toward 421 and also Highway 60. Versailles Road all the way to Shelbyville. Uh, that's where you're seeing some of that rain at this very moment. Down south, yeah, we're still seeing some showers roll on through. It's not a lot, but it is there. So as you're traveling this morning across 27 and also 127, we're going to be seeing some of this rain pass on through. London, you're about to get in on the mix. And it's, uh, once, I, once again, these aren't thunderstorms. These are showers, and it's not a lot of rain within this. You're getting one blip that's a heavy downpour in northern uh, northern Lincoln County, and that's heading north and northeast. So if you're sitting there in Gary County or even far eastern Boyle County, you get a heavy downpour. It's brief. It's a minute or two, and it moves on. 68 degrees right now in Lexington, and, and that really goes for a lot of locations. This is a very nice start to the day in terms of the way it feels. So as you're walking out the door, that's a good feel. But you could have a few showers on you. Then we get into the afternoon and we'll be there in the lower 80s. Add more showers, more thunderstorms into the forecast, and it's just not going to look that good today. So we're looking at about, depending on where you are, 40 to 60 percent chance of rain. I'd say the better chance is around that 64 corridor, including the bluegrass and southbound. That's the better opportunity. That's your 60 percent chance of rain. Your 40 percent is really into the northern zones, but you're still talking about a pretty decent shot at that, which means if you're you're planning on heading out and checking out any of these yard sales for the US 2568 yard sale. Uh, that's Highway 25 and Highway 68. Spotty storms will be with us today. A couple rumbles tomorrow. I would say tomorrow is the better opportunity to actually stay dry than stay wet. Uh, and then we head towards your Saturday. Here's more storms in the forecast. So just keep in mind that it's going to be one heavy downpour after another, guys, as we head off towards your weekend. Your weekend Saturday is your better chance of rain than, say, Sunday. And then off towards your next week, look at those temperatures in the 70s. It actually feel really, really nice. But rounds of storms are expected, that's for sure. A little bit of everything. Yeah. Looks great. Yeah, it's okay. all in there. Thank you very much, Micah. 442, with summer gearing up, there's going to be more and more mosquito issues around. Yeah, know? while the Zika virus is typically mild, it can have devastating consequences if you contract it while pregnant. 
Here's more on what you should do in today's Moms Every Day. Joining me today is Eric Skajinski from the Health Department. We're talking about Zika. First question, what is Zika? Uh, it's a mosquito-borne illness, much like West Nile or other diseases we've talked about in the past. And what are the concerns for pregnant women? Pregnant women, what this can cause is actually birth defect in those, in those children that they, that they will actually have. And so how do uh, we handle prevention when it comes to pregnant women? What do they need to know? Well, a couple things. One, we would suggest that if you're going to travel down to those affected areas, you really don't take mm -hmm. that precaution, as well as their, as their, as their spouse, too, or, or their mate, to have to travel down there as well. And uh, what about condom use? This is another important yes, aspect yes, here. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, let's, let's face it, condom use will help you protect um, uh, the pregnant women um, from getting the virus because it can be shed through the sperm. Okay, and the really best advice is avoid those travel advisory areas. What you need to do is click on MomsEveryDay.com. For Moms Every Day, I'm Rebecca Rainier. For these tips and more, just go to WKYT.com and click on Moms Every Day. It's good to have you with us here on WKYT this morning as we get started here on your Thursday. A lot more news coming right up. A California community is left to pick up the pieces after murder-suicide on the UCLA campus. We'll hear from students there when we come back on WKYT this morning. Hey, good morning. Welcome back into WKYT this morning at 447. Just a week before final exams, all classes and activities on the UCLA campus are canceled after a murder suicide on campus yesterday. Chris Martinez has the latest on the investigation from Los Angeles. CBS News has learned a professor died in a murder-suicide at an engineering building on the campus of UCLA. Sources say it appears a male student shot and killed engineering professor William Klug. LAPD SWAT teams armed with automatic weapons swarmed the campus after reports of an active shooter around 10 a.m. Wednesday. Everybody started running and I just didn't know, like, why are we running? And then there was a police officer, he was like yelling at us to get out, get out with a machine gun. The campus went into immediate lockdown. I knew it was kind of serious. Uh, we went in class, they locked the door and everything. I'm assuming police were checking the doors because someone tried to open our doors. Officers searched students as they evacuated their classrooms. Police say they found a gun and a note in the engineering building. Police have not yet said what led to the deadly shooting. Classes will resume Thursday. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. UCLA is offering counseling to students, faculty, and staff. Hillary Clinton kicks off a big campaign swing in California today with her sights set on her Democratic rival Bernie Sanders as well as the presumptive GOP nominee Donald Trump. Hannah Daniels has the latest on the campaign. Hillary Clinton is expected to use her foreign policy address today to declare her likely Republican opponent unfit for office. Clinton's senior policy advisor says she'll, quote, speak extensively about the reasons why Donald Trump is unqualified to be our commander in chief, citing his litany of dangerous policies. Policies she blasted yesterday during a rally in New Jersey. He has attacked our closest allies. He has said, let's pull out of NATO. Clinton also called the presumptive GOP nominee a fraud over his now defunct Trump University. Trump and his employees took advantage of vulnerable Americans, encouraging them to max out their credit cards, empty their retirement savings. Trump fired back during a campaign event in Sacramento. She's one of the worst secretaries of state in the history of our country. She went to sleep when our ambassador was murdered. Despite efforts to pivot to the general election, Clinton remains locked in a bitter primary battle with rival Bernie Sanders. In California, the latest NBC Marist poll has both candidates virtually tied. Wall Street says they could live with Hillary Clinton, they could live with Donald Trump, but they cannot live with us. Clinton is likely to gain enough delegates in next week's primaries to secure the Democratic nomination. Hannah Daniels, CBS News. And six states, including California, are voting this coming Tuesday. Kentucky State Police think crews may have found the wreckage of a plane that disappeared in western Kentucky Monday. Police say 70-year-old Robert Delzell was flying from Grayson County to Owensboro in his small plane, but never made it. Yesterday afternoon, police say search crews found plane wreckage and a body in a wooded area of Hancock County. 
Police say they have not been able to positively confirm if the body is that of Dalzell. It has been taken to Louisville for an autopsy. A man faces charges for some thefts at a Scott County cemetery. Georgetown police charged 35 year old David Harris with theft. They say he also had some outstanding warrants. According to the Georgetown News graphic, police say purses were stolen from two cars parked at Georgetown Cemetery over the Memorial Day weekend. Police say they later identified Harris as the suspect and arrested him Tuesday. They say they haven't found the stolen purses yet. The man accused of trying to kill two women in Knox County will appear before a judge today. Police arrested 38-year-old Brian Bunch after a double shooting Monday night. The two women who were shot were flown to the hospital. As of Tuesday, they were in critical condition and police have not released their names. Bunch is charged with two counts of attempted murder. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, he was jailed after a drug roundup last September. The family of a boy who fell into a gorilla exhibit at the Cincinnati Zoo says they have no plans to file a lawsuit. A family representative also said the boy is continuing to heal and is doing okay. Zoo workers shot and killed a gorilla Saturday afternoon after the boy fell into the exhibit. Video shows the gorilla dragging the boy around some water. Yesterday, Cincinnati police released the 911 call that the boy's mother made. I need you to call. Um, what is the I need you to call. This. Cincinnati 911. What is the address? Hi, my son fell in the zoo exhibit okay. at the gorilla. The Cincinnati Zoo. My son we, fell in with the gorilla. Okay. There's a male gorilla standing over him. I need okay. someone to contact okay. the zoo, please. Okay, we do already have them started. We do already have a help started there, okay? How old okay. is this child? Be calm. Be calm. Be calm. How old Be calm. Is He's dragging my son. I can't watch this. Cincinnati police say they plan to question the boy's parents about exactly what happened at the zoo. A central Kentucky judge says he has some concerns about one of Governor Bevin's executive orders. At issue is the governor's order that got rid of the Workers' Compensation Nomination Commission and recreated it with new members. It's now being challenged in court. Yesterday, Franklin Circuit Judge Philip Shepard compared the order to a neutron bomb, saying, quote, it destroyed all of the people but left the structure in place. The judge has not ruled on the case, but he called the governor's actions troubling. A Central Kentucky college has announced it plans to close soon. St. Catherine College in Washington County will officially shut down next month. The college's board of trustees voted to close it because of declining enrollment. St. Catherine's president blames that on a mistake by the Department of Education, which withheld student aid from the school. It's good to have you along on WKYT this morning. A lot going on, obviously. We have a lot more to tell you about in just a moment. A look at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. Plus, we'll have another look at your morning forecast coming up. Hey, good morning. Welcome back in to WKYT this morning. 4.56 is your time on your Thursday. It's time to take a look at some of the stories we're working on this morning. Fearful moments for deputies in Madison County when one of their own was shot making a traffic stop. What we know about the shooting is just ahead in our next half hour. Police say the wreckage of the plane that went missing Monday has been found. A 70-year-old pilot was flying to Owensboro but never made it. We'll have more on the wreckage found coming up on WKYT this morning. We've had several uh, summer-like days in a row here. A little change or two is on the way, yeah, it looks like. nice we'll, weather, hasn't transition. It? Let's check in now with Micah. Yeah, and now we're going to start to see a front move on in. Because the past uh, couple of days, yesterday was more of your pop-up thunderstorms uh, that we were looking at. And we didn't have many during the daylight hours. It's really during the night, right around 9, th it was actually 9.30-ish, as these storms rolled on into the blue ground, uh, bluegrass region and they were pretty loud and that was the start of rounds of thunderstorms we're going to see the next few days. We head through your day and we'll be at 82 by the afternoon. Not as warm but that's because the coverage of storms will be on the increase. I'll show you that. We'll talk about your next few days off into your weekend and how that's going to affect your big plans coming up with another two hours of WKYT News in just a couple of minutes.